Welcome back to the channel, my friends. This time, 835 of you voted, ranking the Souls games from worst to best. I've given my take way back when, so this is your chance as a community to make your voice heard. What game will be first, and why is it Bloodborne? Find out now. Number seven, Bloodborne. It shocked me too, guys. I don't know what happened, you bunch of haters. Riss998 says, I hate Bloodborne. So I did some digging, and yeah, I saw his response. He ranked it last. Let's just say Riss won't be voting on any more polls from now on. <laughs> All jokes aside, number seven, Demon Souls. Ah, Demon Souls. The only game not included in my original ranking of the games. I'll be re-ranking the games post Elden Ring DLC, so if you want to hear my complete thoughts after the collection of games are complete, stick around till June. But yes, Demon Souls, the first game, ended in last, with an average rank of 5.822 out of the seven games. A score of one would mean the game was ranked first by every voter, and seven would mean it was ranked last by every voter. And when considering why, I don't think it's too hard to crack the code. First of all, this was the first game in the series, meaning FromSoft did have a lot more to learn and iterate on over the years. But I think an even more pressing reason as to why is summed up remarkably elegantly by... I haven't played Demon Souls, so I rank it as the worst. Being a PS3 and PS5 exclusive is terrible game design. Genuinely, many of the comments mentioned the fact that Demon's Souls was one of the only Souls games that they hadn't played, and exclusivity plays a huge part here. In fact, it had the second most votes for worst game, meaning another game on this list had more passionate hatred for it than Demon's Souls. But as for the game itself, Convicted Felon 7 says Demon's Souls is boring. Dark Souls 2 has some of the most brain dead design. Oh, okay, okay, this isn't about Dark Souls 2, Convicted Felon. Take it easy. Okay, stay on topic. Digital Frappe says, Playing Demon Souls recently really makes you realize how nice it is in Elden Ring to not have to do stupid boss runbacks. Yeah, so the entire level in Demon Souls is the runback. But there are plenty of aspects about this to appreciate in Demon Souls as well. There are certain levels like 2-2 that provide a quick and easy shortcut to a challenging boss in Flame Lurker, and some of the levels utilize their lengths to build an overbearing or hopeless atmosphere. It definitely depends on your preferred playstyle and game type, but I think as this has generally become a channel focused on boss rankings, many of us are a bit obsessed with getting to the action. And Demon Souls encourages you to just live in this world. Take your time. HM Cars Soa says, Demon Souls provides an amazing atmosphere and deserves respect for laying the foundation. I can't help but agree here and wonder if more people have played it, if there would have been a slight shift in the rankings. Demon Souls is the predecessor of those games and it can be seen that it has great concepts, but if you want to experience the fulfillment of its potential, you should play the other games. Lore, music, and gameplay concepts are still great. It's a good game, but it comes in last for playability. I think this comment sums up the general sentiment though. Kareem Abdallah did go out on a limb and rank Demon Souls in fourth though. Oh wait, that was a typo. Crap. Oh, we got another one here. Game with the most soul in the series. <laughs> I see what you did there. One of a kind atmosphere and a soundtrack with such a different feel to the world than the other games. It's an odd pick for the number four spot, but I'm the type of person that prefers atmosphere and world design and lore over the bosses. It's what made me fall in love with the series. And as mentioned, those who are more into the lore, atmosphere, and world design love themselves some Demon Souls. And I gotta give it to Demon Souls, despite the fact that you start in a disconnected hub and travel outward from the archstones like spokes in a wheel, the game never feels linear to me. Part of this has to do with the fact that you can do any archstone in any order that you'd like, and part of it is because of the rich and inventive world. The archstones themselves provide such unique biomes, atmospheres, and experiences on each one, Many of which were never truly replicated in the same quality in a follow-up game, such as the windswept and stormy mountains of the fourth archstone, or the haunted prison of the third. Interestingly enough, there was no comment on the bosses of Demon's Souls by anybody, and I think that speaks volumes as to why the game ended where it did on many of your lists. Bosses are the climax of a level, and when quite a few of the great areas of Demon's Souls end with a wet fart of a boss, you're left feeling that wet fart in your pants rather than going out in a triumph. With all of that said, many of you mentioned that even though Demon's Souls was your least favorite, it was your least favorite in the sea of fantastic competition, leaving it as an icon of the series that will be fondly remembered for laying the foundation for everything that followed. 
Number six, Dark Souls 2. Raise the flags. We did it, boys. It escaped last place. I really thought that Dark Souls 2 would be a shoe in for last, especially with the recently released Demon Souls remake to revitalize love for the game. But as much as Dark Souls 2 has a lot of haters, and I mean a lot, it does have a small and devoted fan base that seemingly can't get enough of it. To be honest, every list looked like it had Demon Souls or Dark Souls 2 in last, and there was no lack of pure hatred for the two jankiest of all the Souls games. We already saw a convicted felon go off on some aspects. What do I think clinched this upset though? DLCs. Joker says, number six, Dark Souls 2, worst base game, but the areas and bosses in the DLC bring it up from last. Demon Souls, amazingly, never got a DLC, and I think if it did, it'd be raised in some people's minds. This entire idea is why Elden Ring, being lauded so highly by most of the community, is shocking, as the best of the best that FromSoft has to offer is almost always saved for the DLC. Consider Fume Knight and Sir Alon, the two best fights by far in Dark Souls 2, and they're both in the same awesome DLC. So if it was base game versus base game, I actually think that the final scores could have been swapped around, and Demon's Souls could have surpassed Dark Souls 2. But for those who put Dark Souls 2 down at the bottom, many of them had one thing in common. They hated the feel of the game more than anything, despite the clear artistic merits. DS2 would be put at number one if it actually felt good to move and fight with your character, something that every other Souls game easily pulled off. There are so many different things that go into creating a good game, like we've talked about the music, the bosses, the areas, the world design, the lore, but the reality is if those fundamental building blocks are just off a little bit, they can throw off the entire experience. Great lore with amazing build variety and best v PvP in the series that gets ruined by garbage game design. As much as I dislike this game in certain aspects, I still love it for the balls it had. It introduced so many new mechanics and whilst most didn't work out, I respect it for it. Ganks, ADP, hitboxes, that pretty much covers everything to do with the feel of the game that people have a serious issue with, but there is also the inherent sluggishness and apparent jankiness from time to time. A perfect example is attacking directly after a roll. I've talked about this before, but in nearly every other game, your character will automatically turn to target the locked on character after a roll, but in Dark Souls 2, I have to intentionally delay my attack so that I can make sure it actually goes where my character is locked onto. This doesn't matter in general AAA games and titles, but when you have a game built on challenge like this, these tiny details can absolutely eviscerate the flow of combat, making it feel essentially like the opposite of the mechanical perfection of Sekiro. To test this out, I actually did a quick little check to see what the average Dark Souls 2 fan thought of Sekiro, and every single one that I checked out of the 10 put Sekiro in the bottom three, so Chris mechanics are potentially the least important to the Dark Souls 2 fans. But as I said before, you can't have a discussion about Dark Souls 2 without the Dark Souls 2 defenders making their claim in the sand, hate comments bouncing off them like they have full Havel protection on. Dark Souls 2 is the best. It's horribly underrated by the community. It is hated by those who haven't even played it. It is hated by those who rush through areas that should be taken slowly. It's not the best, but it outshines the rest. I love every part of it, even the clunky stuff people get mad for. Adaptability is a great choice because it's the... <laughs> It's hard to read this. Adaptability is a great choice because it is a mechanic of the game that gets better after leveling it up. And yeah, the hate comments came in below Ethan Culp. Speaking of which, do you guys really have to sh all over every positive Dark Souls 2 comment? I never understood this. If somebody loves something that's like not offensive, can we just let them enjoy it? It's not like they're hurting anything. As for my love for the game, there is a huge diversity of areas and enemies, and even a lot of the bosses that might not be quite as grand as all of the other games, but still have great amount of flavor and zest, if you will. Underrated bosses like the Flexile Sentry or weird ones like Seaman of Dong, they're just really fun to fight. And there were definitely a plethora of hot takes from Dark Souls 2 fans. I personally like Dark Souls 2 more than Dark Souls 1. Okay, comments like this are something that I don't feel I can ever fully understand. In literally every individual facet of the game minus PvP and build variety, Dark Souls 1 feels vastly superior to me. And this is borne out in the data. From this ranking position to the next, we see our largest jump in ratings. The next game on this list was ranked 1.4 positions higher, on average, than Dark Souls 2. And that's number five, Dark Souls 1. Guys, 
I'm shocked. What? Who? What? When? Where? I think I might have cultivated a little bit of a selective sample for myself. Or everybody just agreed with my original rankings video. I knew I had my finger in the pulse of the culture. But seriously, I don't think if you pulled the overall Souls-wide community that the original Dark Souls would place this low. I considered it a scalding hot take when I originally placed Dark Souls in the same exact spot in my original rankings. I wonder, has the general sentiment evolved over time? Or is it just my community being a bunch of people who generally align with my takes? Or is it a combination of both? What I really think the culprit is, is that many of my viewers are people who tuned into the Souls games later on, likely with the release of Elden Ring. I am a fan of FromSoft, have played Dark Souls 3, Sekiro, and Elden Ring. A few months ago I decided to tackle Dark Souls 1. Stopped three hours in, never looked back. I can see the sprouts that would eventually become Dark Souls 3, but it's just not even worth finishing. I'm not saying it's bad, but the only thing it did is make me want to replay 3, which I did do. I think this goes into a phenomenon that really isn't any different than any entertainment medium. As times change and things evolve, people expect some baseline quality of life in their content. When it comes to movies, they might expect color and a clear picture. When it comes to music, they might expect crisp audio and clear bass. And when it comes to video games, they expect there to be omnidirectional rolling, rolling, rolling. So yes, there are some basic quality of life components that are missing from the original Dark Souls. The aforementioned omnidirectional rolling, the limited build options, the graphical fidelity, the dated animations and whatnot. The remaster fumbled an opportunity to really capitalize and enhance on some of these components of the game. It even washed out some of the color in certain places. But to say that it wasn't worth going past three hours in is definitely a sizzling take. The early game of Dark Souls 1 is one of the most magical experiences you can have in a game. We've all heard it before, but it's worth saying again. The looping back to fire length, the interconnected world design, and the philosophical and psychological connection between the sense of triumph and despair as the game takes you on a digital journey that feels so real you'd think you're in another world. The game clearly meant something, and I honestly feel that of all of the games, this feels like the biggest passion project. And that desire, that drive, that creativity, it just oozes out of every low-res texture in the game. You can tell Miyazaki carefully and meticulously crafted every aspect of this game from front to back. Well, at least to front. The elephant in the room is the second half of the game, though I won't really even go that far. For me, it's really just everything to do with Lost Isolus and the lava section of the game. That whole section could be removed and this game would arguably be a better game. Even Tomb of the Giant Sunido, which is maybe the most fury-inducing section in this entire godforsaken stretch, it makes me want to rip my face off just so I can sew it back on and rip it off again. It has clear inspiration. I don't know, Lost Isolus just really makes this game feel incomplete, but what did you all have to say? Best lore out of the trilogy with the best world design. This game truly made me fall in love with the series and its amazing lore and characters. Truly a masterpiece of a game that has endless depth. I mean, yeah, just check out the amount of video essays on Dark Souls 1 and uh, you can sense the depth. My preference for the games is exploration and level design. And I believe Elden Ring and Dark Souls are the best at that. Elden Ring and Dark Souls 1 are also the games that have the most memorable boss fights to me because each major boss ties into the levels so well. There are a few times in the other games where the boss really is integrated into the level really well. For example, Dark Eater Medir. But for a lot of the bosses outside of these two games, I totally agree. There's a little bit of a disconnect between who they are and where they're found. With all of that said, there's a sizable jump of almost one entire ranking slot on average higher with this next position, meaning you guys thought there was a pretty sizable gap from here to your top four. I can't believe I'm saying that to Dark Souls 1, but starting with number four, Sekiro. I still can't believe Sekiro beat out Dark Souls 1 with you guys, but fair enough, I'm not gonna argue. I'll let you guys do the talking here. One of the most satisfying combat systems ever in gaming. Hard to rank it because it's the most different entry in the series. Not many flaws in this game, and so it is still a great experience, but I generally prefer the darker and more abstract worlds of FromSoft. Sekiro is a great game, but my least favorite because I don't like anything outside of the gameplay setting, OSC, atmosphere, and most vehemently, the main character. While I don't fully agree with this take, I will say that at times our wolf can feel like a bit of a, well, a wet mop to say the least. Sure, our main characters don't really talk in the Souls games anyways, but this gives like an ethereal and ambiguous quality where we can fill that emptiness with something of our imaginations. 
and we're told these fantastical stories of who we're meant to become or how we're nothing and we're to prove the world wrong. Wolf is primarily a protector and there's nothing wrong with that, but the zest is turned down just a bit in Sekiro in favor of a flawless gameplay experience. Sekiro the GOAT! Sekiro, 9.5 out of 10, best combat and best most memorable characters, one of their most innovative titles. I would 100% agree on the innovation, but that's mostly because Dark Souls 1 and Demon Souls were so innovative that all the other games have kind of just been iterating on that. Sekiro really takes a step in a different direction. For me, it is close between Elden Ring and Sekiro. Elden Ring may be the overall greater game, but Sekiro gives you the best moments of accomplishment after defeating a boss through pure skill. It also throws the least amount of bullshit, being stupid runbacks, blood vial farming, chalice dungeons, or annoying area and enemy placements at you. Also, the soundtrack is underrated. Sekiro is the best set of these and it's not even close. Sekiro's gameplay is on a whole other level and it's the only one that actually forces you to get good. Bloodborne is the second best, obviously. This one is purely because of the rally system and world and enemy designs, but yeah, I like all the FromSoft games, but Sekiro and Bloodborne take the cake. <laughs> I love the language of obviously like this is a math question. There really isn't an obviously when it comes to the subjectivity of games, but yeah, I mean it's impossible to argue against Sekiro being the most consistent experience FromSoft has offered. Ultimately though, it's quite short and offers no DLC, so there was one violently negative Sekiro take focused on the fact that multi-enemy fights are not exactly the best in the series, and it's all designed around 1v1s. While I somewhat agree, there are ways around this, from the combat arts to prosthetics, but most importantly stealth. He does mention that the stealth mechanic is mediocre, which fair enough, it isn't exactly the most innovative, but the sound design and flow of combat make it just fun as hell for me. In fact, if I wanted to guarantee that I'd have a good time, I would always boot up Sekiro first, because there isn't anything in the game that actually really makes me mad. It's all just dopamine hit after dopamine hit with Makiri counters and perfect deflex. It actually scored in fourth place for worst and best game votes, which implies it's right there in the middle category and it belongs right where it ended up. Before we get into the top three though, I just wanna let you guys know that if you enjoy this video, drop a like and subscribe. If you let me know that you want to, I'll do more of these community rankings going forward. So, now on to our top three. Number three, Dark Souls 3. My list would probably go Dark Souls first because Dark Souls 3 bosses are just too amazing. Dark Souls 3, best boss roster, best soundtrack in my opinion, perfect blend of souls and Bloodborne combat. It's really hard to argue with this, although even with that being said, this was ranked fourth by the previous commenter and third by you guys. So this best boss roster and best soundtrack and nearly flawless gameplay isn't enough anymore. That's how good this top tier has gotten. But the reality is for most people that genuinely isn't enough. While I do find Dark Souls 3's world so unbelievably inspired, it still isn't quite as inspired as the top two places or even as Dark Souls 1, maybe even Demon Souls. So for those looking for that entire package, this game just barely misses that top billing for having done everything perfect except for be a generation defining game in terms of its genre and areas. Number one, Dark Souls 3, my first FromSoft game, which I feel very connected to in a way I don't with any other FromSoft game. The bosses are still the best out of all their games in my opinion. I love the atmosphere and art style, it has some of the coolest weapons, and I think the level designs are also really good. Enemy variety and design is some of the best ever. Great presentation and consistently fun to fight. Also appreciate ones who challenge you in more lateral ways, like Hollow Thralls, who challenge your ability to observe the environment and plan around ambushes and ganks. Fantastic arc direction, great environmental detail and coherency, with a uniquely dystopian atmosphere with no singular catastrophic event or evil entity as a cause, but rather due to the fear and complacency of a people too afraid to let go in the face of the unknown, leading to a slow but ubiquitous permeation of rot and withering. The world offers way more options than most say. Kill Dancer right after Crystal Sage, hard but doable, and you realize soon how many options are suddenly open, especially since the cathedral holds the DLC entry point too, good point. Fantastic boss roster and a great soundtrack that does sound a bit samey, which kind of downgrades it a bit. Areas range from bad to mediocre, and there are some sparks of greatness, but nothing compared to the best areas in the series. Build variety is pretty bad, and weapon art system is poorly executed. Overall, this is my first, and it definitely fell from grace as time went on. 
It's really impressive how Dark Souls 3 inspires such esoteric, thoughtful, and eloquent dialogue DS3 gang. Unpopular opinion, Dark Souls 3 and Dark Souls 1 are super overrated. <coughs> Sorry, I gotta sneeze. He's super overrated. The main two problems with Dark Souls 1 are the four directional roll. Yeah, that, dude, that thing gets me mad. And that it peaks before ONS, then the rest of the game is kind of mid. With Dark Souls 3, on the other hand, zones look all the same and the linearity of the game doesn't help. For me, the best is Dark Souls 2. Wow. Okay. With all that said, as you can tell, there are some kind of disparate opinions in Dark Souls 3, but I think everybody can agree on the bosses, the combat, all that stuff is really fun. On a first glance, yeah, the areas can look a little samey, but I feel like in my most recent playthrough, it's actually gotten me to appreciate the impeccable art direction more and more. I'd say the bigger problem is the proximity of bonfires, making it feel a little bit too easy to progress through the levels, and lack of truly challenging area sections make them a little bit less memorable. However, there's a reason many of the people disgruntled with the bosses of Elden Ring turned to Dark Souls 3 as an, of an example of how to do bosses right. When I think of souls, very often the first thing my brain goes to is the moments with the peak bosses of Dark Souls 3, and there's a reason for that. It received the second least votes for worst game, and the third most for best game. Second least votes for worst implies that it isn't quite as divisive as the second place entry, although it's not quite as beloved either. So here's the obvious number two pick. L. Bloodborne. It's Bloodborne. I have to wonder how much of the PS4 exclusive component has to do with this. Or is it just that my channel exploded with the launch of Elden Ring? And that means all of you are Elden Ring fanboys. In any case, Bloodborne was second, and it wasn't even particularly close despite the passion of the Bloodborne fans in the comments. I ranked Bloodborne 1 because it's the best and I think it's the best. Well said, Cracky, well said, De delicately put. Not really much to say, almost a perfect game. The only criticism I can have is the healing system and the fact that sometimes the atmosphere can get so dense that it's honestly difficult for me to play this game for a long time in one sitting. It's interesting, there were actually quite a few comments that echoed this sentiment. And on my most recent playthroughs, I'd have to say I totally agree. Part of this comes from the necessity to farm blood vials, which makes any time you hit a wall feel particularly grueling. And the disgusting and oppressive atmosphere is a bit much at times. Honestly, the hardest game for me to marathon out of all of them. So this used to be my number one and I still think it's a masterpiece. This was my introduction to the FromSoft games and has been my favorite aesthetic of the Soulsborne games. The presentation is just perfect. Best OST in the series, Yarnum is an amazing setting and the whole thing just is so effortlessly cool. The HP Lovecraft type of themes are my favorite thing about this and I really love the combat including the trick weapons. Jeez, this guy's just got all positives, why is it not number one? Well, the boss quality can get shaky, which makes me return to it less than Elden Ring and Dark Souls 3. And this was the only other comment which really mentioned negatives, the boss quality being a bit shaky. And while I do find that understandable with Rom, the One Reborn, and Miklash being the biggest culprits, it also has so many of the best bosses in the series. Sure, it's not quite up there in the best of the best boss category, but the other things that it rocks at more than make up for it. Just look at this setting, this combat, this rally mechanic. For some reason, even though I know that Bloodborne is not the biggest of the games, it always felt to me like it had the most underlying. The more I peeled back layers, the more I would find. The more amazing and haunting discoveries, and perhaps that's just because the disturbing and unnerving nature of things makes them stick in your brain more. Psychologists have definitely discovered over time that moments that elicit a emotional response stick in your brain more than any other, and Bloodborne being so over the top and negative and dark and creepy in some ways just really makes it stick in your brain as something that is just unforgettable. And the juxtaposition of such disgusting things alongside such amazing and beautiful things makes it a unique experience that you can't get anywhere else even in other FromSoft games necessarily. And while it is true that Bloodborne doesn't have the strongest second half compared to the first, I actually think that the weakness is nothing compared to Dark Souls 1's drop off. Plus, there are things in that late game that still just absolutely are perfect. The area quality never really suffers, to me it's more about the bosses, such as Miklash, The One Reborn, etc. But somehow, without a DLC to boot, the greatest FromSoft Souls-like game as decided by my community is Elden Ring.
could it be anything else? It really does feel like this game was the culmination of everything FromSoft has done up to this point, their magnum opus. Elden Ring is the best game in my opinion. It has issues like most of the others, but when it's good, it's really good. Dark Souls 1 is the best world design and interconnectivity. Dark Souls 3 is the greatest boss lineup overall. Bloodborne is kind of good at most things, but they all have pretty big flaws. Dark Souls 1 and Bloodborne have very front heavy and late game isn't that good for them either. Dark Souls 3 is a bit too hard on the nostalgia bait, and it's way too linear. Elden Ring, however, is just the goat. It's basically Dark Souls 4, 5, and 6. Incredible combat. It's like Dark Souls perfected. The world is amazing, especially in a first playthrough. I enjoy piecing together the lore, and it's the easiest to follow. Well, I would probably say, except for Sekiro. Even the NPC quests are easy to get through. It has some of my favorite areas in the whole series, like Stormvale and Lanedell. It has really good bosses overall. Mogan, Godfrey are my faves. It has the best soundtrack, and it has all of this without even having a DLC yet. It's not perfect, once again. The late game kind of ruins things a bit for me, but all things considered, it's absolutely the top tier. With almost 50% more votes for best game than Bloodborne, and less votes for worst game than any on the entire list, you guys have spoken. Sure, the game is the most recent. Sure, this channel is focused on Elden Ring content, but it's pretty evident that Elden Ring is deserving. Not only is this the most massive Souls game, it's the pinnacle of their creativity, world building, and combat with all of the resources necessary to make a game that will not only be the best game in this series, but is in contention for the best game of all time. That doesn't mean it's for everyone, but for the people that connect with it, this may just be the odyssey of a lifetime. If you say Elden Ring best, you an NPC. Well, I've got some bad news for you, Mike. And look at this guy who predicted the order perfectly. How do you do that? Good job, man. Elden Ring created a cultural moment, a moment that will never be forgotten, and one that actually launched this channel into its entire status today. So I just have to thank you guys so much, but I also have to thank FromSoft for creating the game that just brought so much passion to all of our lives. I have never seen such passionate discussion as when Elden Ring dropped. Part of that is inviting all these new Souls fans into the fray, and part of it is that the game just is so inspirational. It inspires hatred, it inspires love, it inspires so much in us, and for that I just have to say thank you to FromSoft. I've got a lot more to say about Elden Ring, but I do want to save some of it for future videos. I haven't replayed it in many months now, taking a break as I prepare to re-rank everything. But every time I go back, I'm just in awe of how smooth the game feels. The beauty of the vistas in the glorious world that they have created and the accompanying glorious story and characters. Nothing in this series has ever felt more real to me than Elden Ring, and that's the biggest compliment I can give. I will tell you right now that compared to my original ranking, I have shifted the placement of a few of the games, and obviously with Demon Souls thrown into the mix, that could reshift the order a decent amount. So be sure to follow me if you're interested in getting my ranking after the Elden Ring DLC. And that's that though, guys. This is your community ranking. Let me know how you guys enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed this format, let me know down below and we'll do it with some other things like hardest bosses, hardest games, or ranking areas. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. I hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.